Hello grade 9 science class, welcome back to a brand new unit. This is the electricity unit uh, and this is lesson 1. So lesson 1 is going to focus on static electricity and lesson 2 is going to be about some applications for it. Then we're going to transition into current electricity, so those are the two major types uh, and we're going to focus a lot on like what those are and what those are used for. After that, we're going to talk about some circuits, we're going to do some calculations, and we're going to talk about the different types of circuits that can be used in your house, uh, and the different um, pros and cons for each one. So this is a very practical unit. Um, if you want to be an electrician, or a, a house builder, or a carpenter, um, these topics are really important to know. So this is just a start for that. So static electricity is lesson one. You'll notice all of these lesson titles have this color on them. So if you're seeing a video with a different color uh, when you're supposed to be in the electricity unit, um, check that out and come to this one instead. You see we got key points. Key point one is electrons, which is familiar. Um, it should be from the chemistry unit. So let's talk about it. Little review. Uh, we know that all matter, all the stuff, in the world is made up of small particles called atoms. Uh, the center or the nucleus of an atom contains uh, neutrons and protons. So overall, the nucleus is a positively charged place. Um, yeah, the nucleus has a positive charge. Uh, electrons are negatively charged and they are outside the positive nucleus spinning all around in different areas. Uh, electrons are small and can sometimes move between different orbitals. They can jump around from one level to another, if you remember our Bohr diagram. Right here, electrons can sometimes move from this level to this level or to a higher level if it's available. Um, protons are larger and found in the nucleus and they do not move. So we have our picture of our atom, our Bohr diagram, which we should be familiar with. The nucleus is the yellow part in here and it contains the neutrons and protons, which are purple and red. And outside are the electrons. So the electrons are able to move around, hop back and forth, while the protons and neutrons are stable. They don't move, they stay where they are. Uh, again, the, nu the nucleus, the part that stays where it is, is positive, and the outside area, the part that can move around, is negative. So these uh, subatomic particles, protons and electrons, have charges, and these charges can be uh, scaled up to materials, to solid materials. So in a solid material, only ele the electrons are able to move. So this makes sense. Electrons are on the outside. They are the ones that are able to move around, while the protons and the neutrons are stable and immovable on the inside. Solid materials are charged with the transfer of electrons. So when electrons move from one part, one thing to another, one object to another, uh, those objects become charged. Um, how you move electrons between one and another? Well, a really common way is friction. So friction between two objects can result in one object losing electrons and the other object gaining electrons. So if you are losing electrons, you're going to become positive because you're losing that negative part. And if you're gaining electrons, you're going to become negative. Again, we have our Bohr model here. And I just think looking at this picture, it makes sense why electrons are able to be moved or rubbed off uh, to another object and why protons are not. Protons are in the middle and stuck together with the uh, neutrons, very, very stable, uh, while the electrons are just kind of everywhere around the outside. They're very light and they are very easy to rub off. Uh, they move around a lot. So I just think this model um, is a very good description of why electrons can move around. So again, positive charges uh, is if an object loses the electrons. So we lose a negative, um, therefore it has more positive than negative charges, so the object has a positive charge overall. You have a negative charge if the object gains electrons. You have more negative charge than positive, so you get a negative overall charge. Well, you can also have neutral charge and this is if the object has the same number of positive charges and negative charges so just generally just objects that are sitting around for a while are neutral uh, they aren't positive or negative they have the same number of positive charges and negative charges when you start to um, rub different objects together that is when charges can move 
So we have a description here, a picture description. Um, you can see that this is a neutral object. And I say it's neutral because look, there's the same number of positive and negative charge. These two are paired up, these two are paired up, these two, these two, and these two to make five of each. Uh, to have a negatively charged object, uh, I do not like this description of it actually now that I'm looking at it more closely uh, because this picture seems to have removed positive charges and that is not allowed. Positive charges do not move. So although this is a negatively charged object because there are five negatives and three positives, what I would have done is I would have added negative charges into the picture to have more negatives than positives. So this picture makes it look like uh, positive charges have been removed when that is not possible and that is not allowed. This picture on the right side, however, is accurate. Uh, we have three, uh, sorry, five positive charges and two negative for a total of plus three. However, this makes sense that the negative charges are removed because negative charges are the ones that can move around. So positive charges should have stayed the same throughout the uh, three pictures, and the negative charges should have been added or removed to make these positive or negative. So that's my one critique of this picture now that I'm taking a very, very close look at it. Um, maybe that'd be a good question for you if I, take, if I, if I show you this diagram on a quiz. Uh, or a test to be and ask you like what is wrong with this picture uh, to me it would be that positive charges are all of a sudden disappeared from that middle picture which is definitely not allowed so static electricity um, when these electrons move that is static electricity so uh, it refers to electric charges that can be collected and held in one place so again uh, the examples are often like rubbing two objects together. Uh, for example, when you rub a balloon on your hair, uh, it becomes kind of sticky or your hair will stick to the balloon sometimes. Um, this is static electricity or a static charge. Electrons have moved from one part to another, making your hair maybe positive and your, the balloon negative. And then those two are attracted to one another, positives and negatives, which we'll get more into in the next lesson. This is called static because after the electrons are on the objects, they generally don't move. Here is a description of it in a picture and in words here. So we're going to use acetate and paper towel. Essentially, it's just two different materials. So acetate and paper towel are both neutral in the description A here. Uh, we have positives and negatives in the same amounts and same with acetate. So they're neutral. What we're going to imagine is that we rub these two things together. So rub them together and the paper towel loses electrons. So you can see over here, electrons here, 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 down here are missing. And they have been added to the acetate uh, sheet. So the acetate gains electrons while the paper towel loses electrons. So the paper towel becomes positively charged while the acetate becomes negatively charged. So the number of the charges that are drawn in the diagrams uh, doesn't necessarily indicate that there are that many electrons and that many protons. There's actually like millions or billions of them. Uh, it just shows like the kind of relative numbers that move. So some electrons will move onto the acetate. Uh, so again, if you gain electrons, you become negative. And if you uh, remove electrons, you become positive. We have two things for you to do. There is a little bit of research about static electricity, just wanting you to uh, find a definition, put a definition in your own words, and um, come up with a few examples of static electricity. And then there is an interesting activity. Uh, I'd like you to just follow through and answer the questions in the spaces provided. Uh, if you guys have any questions about static electricity or electricity in general as we get going here, please let me know. Uh, but I hope to see you in class very, very soon. Thanks so much.